Cantos twenty one to twenty six of Book five of the Ramayana of Balmiki. Translated by Ralph to H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O. One, two, three. Canto twenty one. Sita scorned. She thought upon her lord and sighed, and thus in gentle tones replied. Beseems thee not, O king, to woo a matron to her husband true. Does vainly one might hope by sin and evil deeds success to win? Shall I, so highly born, disgrace my husband's house, my royal race? Shall I, a true and loyal dame, defile my soul with deed of shame? Then on the king her back she turned and answered thus the prayer she spawned. Turn, Robin, turn thee from thy sin, seek virtue's paths, and walk therein. To others' dames be honour shown, protect them as thou wouldst thine own. Taught by thyself from wrong abstain, which wrought on thee thy heart would pain. Beware, this lawless love of thine will ruin thee and all thy line, and for thy sin, thy sin alone, will Lanka perish overthrown. Dream not that wealth and power can sway my heart from duty's path to stray. Linked like the day god and his shine, I am my lord's and he is mine. Repent thee of thine impious deed, to Rama's side his consort lead. Be wise, the hero's friendship gain, nor perish in his fury slain. Go ask the god of death to spare, or red bolt flashing through the air, but look in vain for spell or charm to stay my Rama's vengeful arm. Thou, when the hero bends his bow, shalt hear the clang that heralds woe, loud as the clash when clouds are rent, and Indra's bolt to art is sent. Then shall his furious shafts be sped, each like a snake with fiery head, and in their flight shall hiss and flame marked with the mighty archer's name. Then in the fiery deluge all, thy giants round their king shall fall. Canto twenty two Ravan's Tread. Then anger swelled in Ravan's breast, who fiercely does the dame address. It is ever thus, in vain we sue, the woman and her favour woo. A lover's humble words impel, her wayward spirit to rebel. The love of thee that fills my soul still keeps my anger in control, as charioteers with pit and rain, the swervings of the steed restrain. The love that rules me beats me spare, Thy forfeit life, O thou most fair. For this, O Sita, have I borne, The keen reproach, the bitter scorn, And the fond love thou boastest yet, For that poor wandering anchoret. Else had the words which thou hast said, Brought death upon thy guilty head. Two months, fair dame, I grant thee steel, to bend thee to thy lover's will. If when that respite time is fled, thou still refuse to share my bed, my cooks shall mince thy limbs with steel, and serve thee for my morning meal. The minstrel daughters of the skies looked on her row with beating eyes, and some bright children of the gods consoled the queen with smiles and nods. She saw, and with her heart at ease, addressed a fiend in words like these. Hast thou no friend to love thee, none, in all this isle to bid thee shun? The ruin which thy crime will bring on thee and thine, O impious king. Who in all worlds save thee could woo, me, Rama's consort, pure and true, as though he tempted with his love, Queen Sechi on her throne above. How canst thou hope, vile wretch, to fly 
the vengeance that even now is nigh, when thou hast dared, untouched by shame, to press thy sweet on Rama's dame, where woods are teak and grass is high, a lion and a hare may lie. My Rama is the lion, thou art the poor hare beneath the bough. Thou railest at the lord of man, but wilt not stand within his can. What is that I unstricken yet, whose impious glance on me was set? Still moves that tongue that would not spare the wife of the Sarat's heir. Then, hissing like a furious snake, the fiend again to Sita spake. Deaf to all prayers and threats art thou, devoted to thy senseless vow. No longer respite will I give, and thou this day shalt cease to leave. For I, as sunlight kills the morn, will slay thee for thy skate and scorn. The Rakshas god was summoned, all, the monstrous crew obeyed the call, and hastened to the king to take the orders which he fiercely spake. See that ye god are well, and tame, like some wild thing, the stubborn dame, until her half the soul be bent by mangled threat and blandishment. The monster's heart away he strode, and passed within his queen's abode. Canto twenty three, the demon's threats. Then round the helpless Sita drew, with fiery eyes the hideous crew, and thus assailed her all and each, with insult, taunt, and threatening speech. What? Can it be thou prightest not, this happy chance, this glorious lot, to be the chosen wife of one so strong and great, Pelestia's son? Pelestia does have sages told, is mid the lords of life and rolled. Lord Brahma's mind-born son was he, fought of that glorious company. Visravas from Pelestia sprang, through all the worlds his glory rang. And of Visravas, Larzite dame, our king, the mighty Ravan, came. His happy concert thou mayst be, scorn not the words we say to thee. One awful demon, fiery eyed, stood by the metal queen and cried, Come and be his, if thou art wise, who smote the sovereign of the skies, and made the thirty gods and tree overcome in furious battle flee. Thy lover turns away with scorn From wives whom grace and youth adorn. Thou art his chosen concert, thou Shall be his pride and darling now. Another, Bikata by name, In words like these addressed the dame. The king whose blows in fury dealt, The Nagas and Gandharvas felt, In battle's fiercest brunt subdued, has stood by thee and humbly ood, and wilt thou in thy folly miss the glory of a love like this? Scared by his eye, the sun grows chill, the wanderer wind is hushed and still, the rains at his command descend, and trees with new blown blossoms bend. His ward the hosts of demons fear, and wilt thou, dame, refuse to hear? Be counselled, with his will comply. O oh, lady, thou shalt surely die. Canto twenty four, Sita's reply. Still with reproaches rough and rude, those fiends the gentle queen pursued. What can so fair a life displease to dwell with him in joyous ease? Dwell in his bowers a happy queen, in silk and gold and jewel sheen. Still must thy woman fancy cling To Rama and reject our king. Die in thy folly or forget That wretched wandering anchoret. Come, Sita, in luxurious bowers, Spend with our lord thy happy hours. The mighty lord who makes his own The treasures of the walls overthrown. Then, as a tear bedewed her eye, The hapless lady made reply. I loathe 
with heart and soul to test the shameful life your words suggest eat if you will this mortal frame my soul rejects the sin and shame a homeless wanderer though he be in him my lord my life i see and till my early days be done will cling to great ikshako's son then with fierce eyes on sita set they cried again with taunt and tread each licking with her fiery tongue the lip that to her bosom hung and menacing the lady's life with aches or spear or murderous knife hear sita and our words obey or perish by our hands to-day thy love for ragu's son forsake and raven for thy husband take or we will rend thy limbs apart and banquet on thy quivering heart now from her body strike the head and tell the king the dame is dead then by our lord's commandment she a banquet for our band shall be come let the wine be quickly brought that frees each heart from saddening thought then to the western gate repair and we will dance and revel there canto twenty five sita's lament on the bare heart the lady sank and trembling from their presence shrank like a strayed fawn when night is dark and hungry wolves around her bark then to a shady tree she crept and thought upon her lord and wept by fear and bitter woe oppressed she bathed the beauties of her breast with her hot tears incessant flow and found no respite from her woe as shakes a plantain in the breeze she shook and fell on trembling knees while at each demon's furious look her cheek its native hue forsook she lay and wept and made her moan in sorrow's saddest undertone and wild with grief with fear appalled on rama and his brother called o dear kaushalya hear me cry sweet queen sumitra list my sigh true is the soul the wise declare death comes not to relieve despair it is vain for dame or man to pray death will not hear before his day since i from rama's side depart and tortured by my cruel god still live in hopeless woe to grieve and load the life i may not leave here like a poor deserted thing my limbs upon the ground i fling and like a bark beneath the blast shall sink oppressed with woes at last ah blessed are they supremely blessed whose eyes upon my lord may rest who mark his lion port and hear his gentle speech that charms the ear alas what antenatal crime what trespass of forgotten time weighs on my soul and bids me bow beneath this load of misery now Canto twenty six Sita's Lament I, Rama's wife, on that sad day, by Ravan's arm was borne away, seized, while I sat and feared no ill, by him who wears each form at will. I helpless captive left forlorn, to demons' treads and taunts and scorn. Here, my lord, I weep and sigh, and worn with woe, would gladly die. For what is life to me afar from Rama of the mighty car? The robber, in his fruitless sin, would hope his captive's love to win. My meaner foot shall never touch the demon whom I loathe so much. The senseless fool, he knows me not, nor the proud soul his love would blot. Yea, limb from limb will I be rent, but never to his prayer consent. Be burnt and perish in the fire, but never meet his base desire. My lord was grateful, true and wise, and looked on woe with pitying eyes. But now, recoiling from the strife, 
he pities not his captive wife. Alone in Janistan he slew the thousands of the Rakshas crew. His arm was strong, his heart was brave. Why comes he not to free and save? Why blame my lord in vain surmise? He knows not where his lady lies. Oh, if we knew over land and sea, his feet were swift to set me free. This Lanka, cuddled by the deep, would fall consumed a shapeless heap, and from each ruined home would rise a rakshas widow's groans and cries. End of Cantos twenty one to twenty six.